see you again. Thanks for your invitation. Okay, my pleasure. So we are here in a part of my uh, old nursery where we have uh, our production of some junipers, pines, whatever, uh, many varieties. So mainly this is our production that we did from cuttings and seedlings. Uh, and for us it was uh, really important to produce this material because we had over the years so many beginners that started with bonsai, started with actually low budget. And I want to show you uh, some examples from people that start with that kind of material as a beginner. They develop it to uh, what you're gonna see uh, in this video. And this is just easy, low budget material like this Juniper's Squamata. You're also gonna see in this video some uh, blau juniper and this blau juniper actually are nothing more or less like this. The example that you're gonna see will be something similar when it started with and <clears throat> it's not about how you uh, design a tree before and after, it's the whole process that how long it takes, what kind of steps we did this is what I want to show you in the next video. But it are all people that started in their beginning period with that kind of material and you will see the results sometimes 10 years later, sometimes 15 years later, sometimes only 4 years later. So enjoy this video and keep watching. So now we are uh, in the greenhouse where you build up to Gonoma and you selected trees from your students yeah. that they were built the trees from just raw material. Yeah, it's yeah. all built from raw material. Yeah. This is uh, what we do mainly here. Um, and these are all examples of students. I called them up last week and <laughs> I knew that you were coming and I said, okay, uh, we only have a couple of days time. So can you bring this tree? Can you bring this tree? So uh, about eight or nine different people came with uh, one of their trees that I pointed out and I asked it especially uh, to bring a tree where they started with when they just started bonsai. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they just started bonsai, some people are just started four years ago, others started 25 years ago and I asked especially for bring your beginning tree mm -hmm. and the first tree that they were then in that time a beginner so they uh, develop it together with the tree, more as uh, the artistic way, the botanical way, the, the whole commitment that they have to do to bring it there. So uh, the, the whole way of working uh, with the bonsai school here is, we start with raw material, and then uh, after the first tiling, you will see it looks not really like, like you should say, because we don't work like before and after, that we never do. We give a first step, a second step, uh, we give a, another styling, and we work every year on the tree till our first image is there. And in the meantime, our foliage is ready. Mm -hmm. And then, actually, they understand, okay, why was my foliage not ready when I start with it? And then they see the difference. There is a difference in plants growing or garden growing and the foliage that we want to. So there is a difference. And then they have already two or three years that they say, well, yes, it's changing. So now I can do more easily what I want to do. So this is the botanical step that leads them also to more understanding what they are doing. Yeah. And also great that you build uh, with the scrolls and the, the tree and the yeah. accent plant. The whole learning yeah. process is actually not from raw material, only from raw material to what they have. It's also when they have it, we go that further, how you bring it on the best way and display. Uh, you also will gonna see examples of their last display two years ago or last year, 
and now the improvement, the improvement of the table, the improvement with the right action plan, the improvement. So all these details, they have to do it because we exhibiting a lot in the club. Mm -hmm. So uh, nearly every club meeting, there is an exhibition here completely with members. Mm -hmm. And there we talk about what can be improved, what is the next step, also not only for the tree, but also for the display. Mm -hmm. I also try to teach them, look, an alternative way. You don't have to find for a scroll. You don't have to find the right table. Do something special. Mm -hmm. We have many, many artistic people that are talented enough to do something. Yeah. So it's not like, in a, I would say, in a normal workshop that you make the trees, Never. the students make the yeah, trees. Yeah, yeah. I uh, guide them in a direction. I show them also with one branch what way they can do. Mm -hmm. But there is not one tree that I did here. I just influence it and I give directions and during the workshop when the tree is not finished, fine for me. This is the way how you have to work at home and bring it back next time. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about it and then I give another example and do it more in detail and they go further. But they have to place every individual branch by themselves. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the most important key here. If, if you want to come here and follow one workshop, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's, uh, you, you need the whole process and I will teach you. Even I teach you how to handle, how to take a branch, how to put it in the right position. Not and that is what you see here. These are not the trees in uh, maybe the same style. It's also different. Yeah. You, yeah. you see that many people work on it. Yeah. Uh, and everybody gives it own inspiration. To yeah, it. this is what, to, what I wanted to ex achieve <coughs> when we have an exhibition. Uh, there is so much variation. There is so much variation in branch structure because they put always something different. And I'm just there to guide them. I'm just there to give a certain idea and a little example. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do them by themselves. And sometimes we need uh, the first brands set out and sometimes we have to redo it again. But this is all by the learning process. I, I'm not creating trees. I'm creating people mm -hmm. that creating trees. And I bring them the knowledge, the botanical knowledge, the artistic knowledge, but also the different steps and a completely different way of viewing to a tree. They all can be somewhere in nature. Mm -hmm. Without this traditional style, we don't use rules, just guidelines. Guidelines to make something special. Yeah. Okay, then we have a look each each tree now yeah. and talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So, this uh, pyracantha was actually uh, digged up in an old garden. It's not even cultivated material, it is an, an old garden, it was about uh, four meters high and wide. And it was just a clump with a little bit roots on. And this was uh, in July 2002, so this is not so long ago in our terms, but uh, you will see uh, that there is a big mark, a big scar, uh, and then certainly we are uh, worked this out a little bit that we have a more taper view. We let all the branches grow around wildly and strong because there was no branches on it and we need a good variation in thicker, thinner, more natural look. So the whole apex, the whole taper, is actually new because the clump was only that size. So the, the whole evaluation is like you can see on all the pictures. Uh, we let branches grow like everybody, every normal technique. We prune it back, start again from there. And this is the whole evolution that a tree like this can make. 
And then there was certainly uh, the decision, are we going to make it more compact and smaller, or is this the size? And from there, when we decided, we remove the training pots, because we're working in huge, very big training pots or wooden boxes sometimes, and there, then the final pot is coming. So uh, when we use a final pot, it is also uh, with different way of use. We're not following the rules about this. Uh, we're following the curves, we're following the lines, and from there also the colors. So this, this color, and I told in a previous video, is the last thing where I think about. It's more the size, the height, the white and how powerful comes the root base out of the pot. If a pot takes too much attention, or if a pot is a little bit too big, it goes over in the bonsai table, that will be also too big. And from there, your tree look nothing anymore. This is the main act, this is the most important thing. And all the rest have to lift up this tree without being there. That's important. He's not there. But still, he lifted this tree up and this table is not too heavy. We have a little bit space over on the table and this is perfect. Normally when we should put this in a display, it should be on the other side of the tokonoma, but here I have to work for the video a little bit different. So normally, like this side is the side that we put it, but now it's just for the video that we can take a better shot. So uh, you will see on the pictures, finally, how we come to that result. And this is a step of, uh, we are now, yeah, 23, so we started in 2002, 20 years, a little bit more. And I want to say to everybody, if you want to start like that on bonsai, this is really an experience that everybody should have, starting with scratch, starting with nothing. And if the learning process and you are guided by somebody that knows where you have to go, somebody that teaches you the way, somebody that sees this tree already when it is a clump, but let you take all the steps, then you can create something natural. Because inside you see the different variation of branches. By many trees, you will see that all the branches have nearly the same age. So we restarted over the 20 years two or three times again, pruned some branches shortly back, then we start with a little bit thinner and there is a variation in this kind of trees. Some varieties we go over the top with the movement, with other varieties, because this is actually a shrub, it's not a tree. Uh, Pyracantha is not a tree, it has to look like a shrub. So, like you see the trees here, all the students now had already a next step. Where are we go from here? So now the next step with, with this tree is, now we need material that grows upwards on this structure branches. So we're not finished yet. The owner is about my age, a little bit older, so he still has time. You know, and we can do it. So the, the funny thing about this tree is that uh, the owner is a club member and I think it's uh, by the best table makers in Europe. So this is the owner. So if you, <laughs> if you see his table, <laughs> like uh, David Russell, everybody uh, know his work. He is really making the finest bonsai tables. And this is so typical on our club members. Uh, it's not about, because he also could say, I'm gonna make an extremely good table and I put this tree on it and my table gonna tell the whole story. So he knows also our philosophy. And uh, if you see what kind of table he used here, it's not that it is my idea, it's his idea. Um, 
Then it, it shows also the spirit of our members where I want to place them. I don't start to fly. You are an artist, you can do it. And this is a display that works completely, this old style and with this old uh, wooden frame here that he made. Comes also that the pot is better. If you see this pot on a normal bonsai table, it will not work. Mm -hmm. And now you have also with the moss, you have the old bark and you have the foliage of a juniper parsoni which is not a common variety to work with. Not so many bonsai people want to work with that because it is too dense and rough. It's not like Itoigawa, it's not like Chinensis, but it is the total experience that you feel, like these old branches that are in it and all the ramification. It's the total view of that old juniper tree that we wanted to achieve. And it's all started <coughs> with raw material. This is the story about this tree. So by all the photos that you see, you see the different steps that we made about making the dead wood. We do it in different steps because we always wait till there is a certain life vein connected <coughs> with one of the branches. And then we do the back side and then we do another side and now we have this <coughs> So with that kind of trees, we never clean up the live vein. Mm -hmm. We never using lime sulfur on the dead wood. This is pure water and a brush, and this is never cleaned. We want to avoid that there are some insects under the old bark. So this we do by mist spraying with a, a product that we save this up. And also the, the character branches, we want to look them very old. We thin this out, the density of the foliage. Wiring is already a long time ago. It's, uh, it's the last uh, two years not really wired. It is like it is. But we started this project only in 2017. So uh, this is not so long and, and this tree was already looking mature uh, four years later and now it's even more and more. <clears throat> so uh, this is actually the different way of wire in, wire in, wire off, wire in, wire off. We only did the wiring as long as we needed branches. Mm -hmm. Because we pruned this out, there was no material available to create our design. So we let it one summer growing, there were some new branches coming, did another wiring and add this to the whole concept. And this we, we were redoing every time till we have this basic structure. And then we let it growing old enough, so two years without doing it, something, and the branches were ticking because this is a fast growing variety. This is actually the most interesting variety to graft on, to, to work with, because you have growth of 20 centimeters, 15 centimeters easily in, in one summer. So this growth brings you to a very strong branch. And this is what we want to show in the, in the inside. So this is so typical for this variety. Actually Parsoni, but it are cuttings from the Hokkaido juniper. And those were in the beginning when I brought Hokkaido junipers. I find this very interesting material because in Japan grafting was just starting. And it were more Hokkaido junipers where they work with in that time. So we start to take cuttings here and I give the cuttings to a nursery man here in the neighborhood. And finally they were all rooted and he brought them back and he said, do you have a name for it? I said, give them a name, they are all, just call them Parsoni, he said. I said, fine. <laughs> and now everybody say it, it's Parsoni. Okay, good. <laughs> but for us it's a, a very interesting uh, variety to teach the more difficulties what you can do with the juniper and also the commitment that you have to do by clean this out and give this beautiful image. Mm -hmm. Natural juniper grow. This is a core bark uh, Zalkova, Zalkova Niri. It's, uh, 
We have more dwarf variety of Salkova with an interesting old bark. Uh, this uh, old bark is coming very fast with this variety. Uh, but this tree in particular was actually an ex bonsai. And also this is something that uh, many beginners uh, have to learn because bonsais are getting tired after the years of maintenance. So many, many trees uh, have the right techniques and by pruning and by everything that is necessary to keep them nice in shape, but the buds are always become weaker and weaker. So uh, this owner was just a beginner in the time that he uh, find this tree and Okay, it was a weak tree, but he didn't realize. So I have to teach them, make this tree stronger first, before we can do the next step. So here you see in the pictures the whole evolution of, evolution of making it stronger. Uh, when everybody should say it's time to prune with a weak tree, you better not do that. Wait another session. Let it grow a little bit longer. The moment you see the tree is not growing anymore, that means he put all his energy already in a couple of centimeters and that was it. If you look then that the buds are become a little bit stronger than before, you're winning in your process. So this is depending how many times in a row you want to do this before you make the tree stronger. And, and then you have to observe the tree. So also this was a learning process for that kind of uh, beginner that, that started in another level, but he was a beginner. And I teach them the way, now your tree is strong enough and we can do the first step, but slowly. Don't put him back in the position where he was. Just the first trimming. We're going to start to open it. We're going to start to select some branches, let some weaker parts growing stronger here and there to make this branch strong. And now we are only, because this is only started in 2018. It's not so long, but if you see on the end now the result already, it's not a weak tree anymore. It's not such a compact pruned tree anymore. It's open, an open structure nice uh, refined branches and also here I have already given them a certain program you're not finished yet this is just now the step that you can take you are now experienced enough after four years and now you can start with bonsai now you can put the ramification on it that you wanted to do on the right way and if you if he, he didn't, didn't do that four years ago, I, he probably lost four or five important branches. And this is something I show the people uh, when a tree is strong enough or when it is time to stop. So this uh, is a cotton yaster. It uh, started as a very young plant uh, and we did a rock planting workshop uh, I think in 2016. So the first uh, step was with a young cotton yaster and a, a young uh, dwarf rhododendron and some more little plants that are now removed. Uh, this was the first step. We uh, selected uh, Ibigawa rock, so that means that we follow more the Japanese uh, way of rock planting, we, we did it quite traditional, hanging with one cascade. But starting with a young tree on something like that, the most important task was how to get as fast as possible with this young plant, give this older image with branches that are still keeping themselves upwards. So now we opened the tree for the first time last year because all the pictures that you see is just the evolution of uh, wire in, wire off, removing all the leaves to let the light in, but it is more the variation in the branch structure. If you notice now one important thing, like we look to an apex, is that 
This is the apex, you know. The apex is made from different branches. It's not one young, because then you, you make the choice already, I'm going to give it a younger image with one apex. If you choose a side branch and another side branch and you make different apexes, you're coming to the more natural way of, this is an apex, like it grow with every deciduous or, or leaf variety. And um, so we have many and this uh, open then, we, we open the whole structure that you can see it. For me, the balance between the amount of leaves, the amount of branches that you can see, and the trunk size is really important. If this is in balance, I can feel the tree. If this is not in balance, give me too much needles, give me too much leaves, give me too much of, of something, then I miss the whole balance. Also, it's strange to say, but for me a good bonsai, it's like a very beautiful striptease. You think you see everything, but you don't see everything. And this is a, a good tree, and in every good tree there is a kind of striptease. This is what I want to... It's, it's, maybe it's not the right thing to say, but uh, this is the feeling that I have uh, with, with certain trees that you say, okay, show me everything you got, but not really everything. And that is uh, <laughs> really important. This is also with the, so the stone. You yeah. see it, you see it now? No? Yeah. Yeah, 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 this is with, with actually with everything. Yeah. Uh, there are things that, that, but there is a difference in you have to hide something because it is something not so nice. And there is also a difference in a gap or an empty space. What's the difference in, in those two? So th this is what you have to feel. <laughs> this is, uh, th those are the discussions that you can take with, with 100 different people and end up five days later with something. Okay, we are just back where we began. <laughs> Not every gap is an empty space. Yeah, yeah. and the other way around. <laughs>